Hello class, today we're going to be working on changing a broken string. You can see that this viola's D string has come unwound here, it loosened up and it snapped, and it's actually detached from the rest of the string wrapped up in there, so I'll show you how we can get that off. Um, first we're going to take the string off from the bottom here where the fine tuners are, and just get the string out of the way, then we can see that it's kind of, it's still wound in there, and we got to get all of that off. This particular one, you can see there's a lot of winding in there. It's probably because the string that was put on was a little bit too big. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, pull it out and then we'll come back and uh, put on the new string. Okay, we got the string winding out from the peg box. So now what we need is our D string. So I'm gonna open up, uh, we have a pack of red labels here. Red labels are not my favorite brand of string, but they get the job done and they, uh, you can see we have all four of them wound here. So we're just gonna unwind these. Go for the D string, which is gray. All right, so we have the D string here. It's gray at the top. I'm gonna start by putting this, this uh, string here in the peg box. You could do this last. Uh, the order isn't super important here. Uh, what does matter though, is that uh, we line it up with the peg hole. You can see there's a little hole right there, and when we push it through, we want it to just barely come out the other side. So we'll push it through, and then we're gonna start to wind it. Now make sure that you wind it towards the scroll. Now that we have it through the peg hole, when we start wrapping it, it's going to wrap towards the base of the peg. So we're going to wrap it once on the other side. So once to the left side of that, of that peg hole. So we'll wrap it around that side. And then you can see there's our entry, so that's we're going to wrap it around that, keeping tension on it. You see I let go of it and it slips. So we're going to go once to the left, keep tension, let it go around, and then we're going to have it cross over, so we need to pull it to the side. Okay. And make sure you always keep tension, you can see I'm holding it very strongly here. You want to keep tension as you pull, and then you can start wrapping it around. And as it starts to tighten, uh, you'll see it didn't actually matter that I started with the string in the fine tuner because it comes undone. So you can just put that back in there, and that will catch, that will stay as soon as we get enough tension on the string from winding the peg. So we keep turning the peg. Okay, so now that we have enough tension, we're going to keep turning and make sure that the string is lined up in two places. Make sure that it's lined up in the groove on the nut and in the groove on the bridge where the D string goes. And then uh, we just start, we want to make sure that everything looks good in the peg box and that we have enough room to start tuning it up. You gotta go up a little bit. Now one thing that happens as you're changing a new string is that uh, it takes a while for the string just to stretch out and settle in. So it's going to be uh, out of tune maybe for the first day or two. Um, so we want to just get the other string up. So once you tune it, uh, it'll play fine for a little while and then it'll probably stretch out and need to be uh, retuned. So I'm gonna keep this one just for a little while. Uh, keep, keep it tuned um, before we get it back to the student so she can uh, happily practice her viola again. And that about does it right now for our string for our string changes. Um, you would do the same thing for the other strings. Uh, just uh, obviously on the viola, the C and the G string would be just on the other side. Uh, and for the violin, the same with the G and the D string over here. All right, so there we have the uh, fully repaired D string um, on this viola. I just wanted to take uh, one minute to talk about rosining the bows because uh, this particular bow um, for the student has given them a little bit of trouble. Uh, even after she's rosined it quite a bit, it still would give a very breathy sound. It didn't sound very full. Um, and I mean, this bow, you can see the bow here is not in the best shape here. Uh, it's pretty thin um, and a little bit worn out. Uh, but what I did was I cleaned the horsehair first and then I reapplied a fresh coat of rosin and even with uh, rosin like this it's not you know it's a small rosin uh, it looks a little bit you know cracked and stuff but it still works and uh, what's important when you're rosining is making sure that you are applying pressure that it, you don't just lightly slide it like this you want to be pressing them together as you're doing these motions so you want to make sure you tighten your bow first and then uh, 
make sure that you're rosining and it'll actually feel like an exercise as you go up and down the bow. You can do it in those small mov movements or uh, once your bow is already rosined, I would suggest not doing small ones like that because you might over apply the rosin and it'll sound too gritty and you'll get uh, a cloud of rosin dust that will make you sneeze. Um, so it's better than to just take your bow, your bow and the rosin from the frog and go just one big swoop to the tip and then one big swoop back to the frog. And I would do that maybe three times uh, per practice or every other practice. And then you just make sure you store the rosin away correctly. Loosen the bow. I noticed a lot of my students over video call, some of their bows tend to stay really tight. Um, so make sure that you loosen the bow before you put it uh, in the case. And that will just help it uh, work for you a lot longer. So that's it, that's changing the D string on the viola and a little bit about rosining the bow. Let me know if you have any questions.